What is going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Shad. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. And if you enjoy the content, hit that like button on your way out as well. So today I want to talk about 2022 and the 35th anniversary of the Nike Air Trainer 1, one of the most iconic silhouettes of all time created by the one and only Tinker Hatfield, one of his many, many genius creations that have revolutionized the sneaker game. So with the anniversary year, we're seeing a lot of releases in the retro colorways, also in new concepts. We have here the Air Trainer 1 SP in the Honeydew. And then behind me, we have a throwback, the 2015 Fragment collaboration with Nike Lab, uh, which is one of my favorite sneakers. The insane quality of that shoe it was a shoe that i actually recently purchased and i wanted them way back then and so price was still good before they blew up i wanted to make sure i got my hands on them so you know definitely check those out i have a couple of other colorways and then some things coming in so you know i am excited about this shoe if you can't tell i love trainers i wanted to read a little bit more into the backstory of the air trainer one how it came to be and i found it to be pretty interesting and i wanted to talk a little bit about that today so if we rewind to 1986 1986 and john McEnroe, i know it sounds weird john McEnroe, the tennis legend and the cross trainer the association's not there but Interestingly, he is one of the main reasons why that shoe exists today. And um, I also want to talk about like just Tinker's thought process behind the shoe, the problem that he was looking to solve with with the sneaker, which is also very interesting as well. Back in 1986, um, Tinker, uh, being a gym rat, was noticing a lot of these uh, athletes of people that come into the gym had bags full of different types of sneakers. And the problem that he uncovered was that these athletes had to use different shoes for different types of disciplines. So you would have a court shoe, you would have a track shoe for running, and then you would have a shoe that you needed for the gym. So he thought to create a sneaker that would be able to have multi-use, uh, multi-purpose, and that's where we get the Air Trainer 1. However, it was just a concept that wasn't something that was actually realized. As a matter of fact, Nike wasn't even thinking to put the sneaker out until John McEnroe, who was actually just returning to tennis after taking a hiatus from the birth of his child, was looking for a new performance sneaker before he hit the court. And as a box of prototypes came to his doorstep, there is the Air Trainer 1 that was included Nike didn't mean to actually include that shoe, but it was there. And it was the shoe that he actually fell in love with, that he started playing in. Nike did not want him to actually hit the court in those shoes. They advised against it. But if you know John McEnroe and the rebel that he was, he actually got what he wanted. He wore the shoes. And as a matter of fact, the first tournament that he was in, he played in those shoes. He actually won that tournament. And so... You know, he went back to Nike, was like, hey, I need more colors. I need, you know, different types of surface outsoles and things like that just to be able to, you know, so he can wear the shoe. And Nike definitely obliged. I think he won a couple of other tournaments after that in those shoes as well. And so, you know, here we are today talking about how legendary that sneaker is. So thank you, John McEnroe, for being able to be who you were and to create a phenomenon that you actually probably didn't even know existed. So another thing about the trainers, synonymous with the trainers is Bo Jackson. We talk about trainers, but it's definitely Bo Jackson, who was the multi-star athlete of the 80s and 90s, quite arguably the greatest athlete of all time. I will say that he is the greatest athlete of all time. You can fight me for that, whatever. But you know, the Air Trainer 3s, the Air Trainer 2s, all of those sneakers, you know, are what we think of when we think of trainers. And then you have, you know, some of the modern ones like the Deion Sanders and, you know, different turf trainers and things like that kind of spawned from that original Air Trainer 1 um, idea. And so, you know, thank you, Tinker Hatfield, for having the foresight and just the genius mind to be able to create such you know, great footwear. And I think that's what I enjoy about sneakers in general is like they weren't just sneakers that were for style. 
they were serving a purpose and to understand that is to to love the shoe even more but you know today's sneakers is definitely more so about you know fashion and you know what's cool or you know things like that but again i think the best part about being uh in the sneaker game is just to you know see that come to life and to understand ex and hear you know, and to actually hear some of these creators and some of the athletes and people who wore them back in the day, you know, what it meant to them and, you know, what those processes look like as well. And so I'm so glad that this year there is a lot of them coming out. You know, I have a few more coming in, so I'll definitely make sure to share them with you. Um, and, you know, the only thing that you know, that I'll say is that I'm, I'm not sure I'm looking forward to the Travis Scott collaboration, but um, I don't know when those are actually even dropping, but those are really, really funky. But, you know, who knows? You might see them. And if I do get them, of course, you will be the first ones to check it out. But um, let me know your thoughts about the Air Trainer one. I know with so many different sneakers that are coming out, Jordan kind of just overshadows everything. But, you know, this one's falling under the radar. But let me know if, if you're if you're picking up the Air Trainer ones, what your thoughts on the, on the silhouette are. And, you know, um, just in general, do you like the shoe? Um, and do you also check for this, you know, the backstories? Do you even care to know the history of the shoe, you know, or is it just something that it's just got to be fly? Love to hear your thoughts. Um, and until the next one, I will catch you guys later. Y'all be easy. Peace.